first of all, on behalf of both myself and Real Combat Media Radio, I'd like to thank you for taking this interview with us, Mr. Guerrero. Oh, uh, yes, of course. It's, it's my pleasure, man. Thank, thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now, let's start from the beginning. You're from the Dominican Republic, which is a beautiful island, but um, in a previous interview, you spoke about you came from very, very humble beginnings. Would you like to talk to the fans about this? Well, yeah, of course. You know, basically it's the same story um, when, when an immigrant just comes to a different country and it's real hard to, it's real hard to adapt. But, um, you know, just my, 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 my dad, my mom, and, my mom and dad, they came, they came here and they brought me here uh, to, the, to the United States to better myself. And, and then, you know, I just, I've never been in trouble. Um, I, I've always... I've never had any problems getting into streets or drugs or anything like that. Just really basic, really boring, you know, just just going to school, having good grades, straight A's, and, and then finally my two brothers started boxing, and um, I was at home just being bored, you know. So so then I was, I, I liked doing a lot of sports, but I never, I never really liked boxing, but then once, once when uh, my brother started doing it, then I started doing it, and then I just started being real good at it. All right, fair enough. So, in the Dominican Republic, uh, well, how old were you when you moved over? Well, I was eight years old when I when I moved from Dominican Republic. So, what were the school? Uh, what, sorry, what were the school arrangements like? Like, did you go to school? Well, well, in the Dominican Republic, it was just. It was just hard, you know. It wasn't hard because everybody had the same lifestyle. Uh, you know, no no electricity, no 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 nothing. You know, just poor. You know, like in the slums. Because I stayed in the in the uh, uh, in the very poor area. That everybody was real good. Everybody stayed together. And, and when I wasn't hung, when I was hungry, um, you know, I just ate anywhere because people was always helpful. And then. Uh, you know, it was just it, it was poverty, a lot of poverty, but you felt free walking walking around and not 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 being exposed to drugs um, or anything like that, or, or 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 a lot of murders. So I, I loved it over there. Yeah. Now, how was it the case that you managed to move over to the U.S.? I know that you're settling in Maryland now. Is that is that where you went straight from the Dominican Republic? No, when I when I left. Um, the Dominican Republic, we went to Puerto Rico. And in Puerto Rico, we stayed there for two months because it was just too bad. A lot of shooting and stuff like that. So then my dad just knew that it wasn't good for us. So then we came to, to America. We came to uh, New York. And uh, we went to Buffalo, New York. And, and it's funny because we never experienced um, a cold weather. And Buffalo, New York is one of the coldest parts in the United States. And um, from we stayed there for two years um, and a half, and then we went to Maryland, and that's when we started. You know, just we stayed there for the rest for the rest of the time, and then we. It's quite a successful amateur career. You won um, you won titles and medals at national championships. What was your proudest moment as an amateur? Well, my proudest moment as an amateur is um, when I start when I started boxing in in, in the amateurs. Um, I really, I really didn't like it, you know, because I did a lot of other sports, and boxing was like one of the ones that I didn't like. But then, since my brothers did it, did it, I did it, and then I started liking it once when I won one of the biggest um, and most proudest moment of my career in boxing was uh, when I won the Junior Olympics, and that's and that's when um when I realized that I could really, really be good because um. You had the Victor Ortiz, and then you had um, Amir Khan, which you're familiar with him. Um, and that's when we all met. Everybody from Puerto Rico, England, and uh, Bahamas, and, and everybody, you know. So um, I became the number one there because I won. I beat everybody. So that was the most proudest moment. Um, that's when I really started doing boxing, and I really started liking it. And then another, another event that I liked was when I won the USA. Uh, when I when um to qualify for, for the Olympics trials, um so that's true. You know the Junior Olympics and the U and the USA for the Olympic trials. Okay, 
You went pro at the age of around 21 and pretty quickly you began fighting at a higher level. You fought guys like Gabe Rosado, Ishii Smith, who was on the contender, and Jesse Nicklo. Um, you got through these fights pretty unscathed. At what point did you realise that you would, you could be a possible world champion or was that always your mindset? Well, um, um, I, knew, I knew that once I got to the pro level. Um, I that's when I started knowing that, wow, like, this is it. So at 16 years old, I, um, that was the only thing that I knew that I could have been. You know, I wanted to be an Olympic, and, I, and then I wanted to be a, a world champion. Um, so I already, um, once when I started fighting, and I had 140 amateur fights, the only thing that you could go, the, the highest goal is just to not just be a world champion, but just to be the undisputed world champion. Mhm. Now you've got yeah. one. You've got one loss on your record against Grady Brewer, who's he's been around a while. He's fought a few good fighters, but he's not really been able to make a big name for himself. Now you took this fight at one five four, I believe, which you didn't even fight at that weight as an amateur. Now, did you struggle to get down to one hundred and fifty four? I I had to kill myself to make that weight. You know, it's just that if you if you follow my my uh, my professional career, I had such a success in the beginning that we were fighting and we got the NABO and the NA, NABF um, and then I was just on the, a show box all the time. Every time when I fight, it was televised. So people saw my body and they thought that um, I could go down because I was weighing in 158, 157. But the thing is, is like um, I've, I've never been 152 or 154 ever since I was 16 years old, you know? So... Um, it was now that I'm 26. It was just hard. It was real hard for me to meet that weight. But the thing is, that, you know, like we try to play it. We try to do um, experiment, you know, and and that's no good, you know. So that's why um, I had to grow up and I had to take care of my of, of my career now, and I gotta um, take care of number one, which is me, because now a lot of people um, um, I doubt of me because of that one fight. But, you know, that's, that's the sport of boxing. You know, like right now, Manny Pacquiao is number one, which is me. Because now a lot of people um, um, are down on me because of that one fight. But, you know, that's that's the sport of boxing. You know, like right now, Manny Pacquiao just lost, and they're just talking about Manny Pacquiao is no good. So boxing is that way. It's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot of um, critics out there that, um, that try to kill the boxer. But uh, I, I'm, I'm here to stay. No, yeah, you're right. It, there's quite a small margin of error in this sport, um, especially if you want to be at the top. Now, as we know, you're going to be fighting against Peter Quillen on the undercard of Garcia versus Judah at the Barclays Centre now. I, how, how does it feel to have such a big opportunity to fight on such a big card? It feels good. You know, it feels, and it feels like it's, it's time. It's about time. So I'm not always or anything. It's just, you know, like I said, you, you asked me um, um, about me thinking about being a world champion and everything like that. I, I thought that I was going to be a world champion when I was 16 years old. So now, um, all, all, I, all I had to do is just be patient. So now, this, this time right now, it's just perfect. You know, I'm not over anxious. I'm not, it's something that it was meant to be, you know. Um, I've been doing this for so long. And I know my talent. I know what I could do. I know. Um, I know how good I am. I think that I'm better than everybody else. But the thing is, is right now on February the ninth, there's no more think. It's either you are or you're not. And then uh, we're gonna see him on uh, February the ninth. Now, was this title shot a long way coming, or did it seem to fortunately fall on your lap? Oh yeah, we're, 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 we're basically, um, basically we were we were ahead of schedule when I when I fought a, um, Grady Brewer because if Grady Brewer wasn't supposed to be a guy that I was supposed to fight. Uh, we were gonna fight for that. We were gonna fight for a world title then, but the thing is, is like um, that was supposed to be like a two and a fight and 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 all that stuff, but. Um, so now, yeah, um, after that happened or whatever, we were just working back up to 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 fight for that world title again. 
we knew once when we knew that we couldn't go down in that in that weight class and we feel healthy in that weight class and all that stuff. Um, we it was all about time, you know. It was about that one call. Uh, we were actually we were supposed to fight the last fight uh, for a world title, but then uh, that's I think that's when I got injured. Um, and then I didn't fight in the Jimmy Taylor on the court. But yeah, we I was I, we been expecting this the long for the longest. Mhm. Another fighter who's getting a title shot next year is Gabriel Rosado, one of your victims. He's going to be fighting on January the 19th for the WBA title held by Gennady Golovkin. Now, if you both come through and win these titles, is this a, is this unification something that you're going to push for? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Um, uh, everything is possible, you know. Because uh, the thing is, you know, um, it is it's kind of funny when you told me about his name. Nobody has ever mentioned his name before when I when I, when one of those fighters that I fought um, because of, like I said a lot of people get their only credit but they don't know a lot about boxing you know Gabriel Rosado that was a real good competitive fight for me because he's a good guy too you know um, a lot of people think that um, they don't know how 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 hard the other guys are training you know so a lot of people are underestimating Gabriel Rosado but. He, he, um, like one person, they told me that Gary Rosado has no chance. He has one percent chance, and in boxing, that's all you need—one percent chance. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people are, are underestimating me with this fight, but um, it's good. You know, like I tell, I'm gonna tell everybody. You know, once when I win the title or something like that, I'm gonna tell everybody. Don't judge me for my last fight. Judge me for the one that I lost. You know, judge him with that one, and you, and you're gonna lose. You know, if you judge me for the my my, my worst one, my my one day that I look bad, uh, then you're definitely gonna lose. Yeah. Now, um, Gennady Golovkin, we've seen um, we've seen Gennady Golovkin come on the scene with a bang. He's knocking people out for fun, and he demonstrates great power. What do you make of him as a fighter? Because he seems to be a fighter that's quite avoided. Not that I don't see anything. I don't see anything impressive about him. You know, I'm not trying to um, disrespect him or anything like that. But the thing is, is um, he. I mean, how many knockouts does Golovkin have? He's he's got like twenty knockouts out of twenty four or something along those lines. Yeah, he has like twenty, twenty two knockouts. I have nineteen knockouts. You know, it's it's whoever the media wants to make out to be big. You know. The left spin did great things in the amateurs. He's a great fighter now. He's a champion, of course. But there's no difference. There's no difference. There's no given day in this boxing that Rosado or Fernando Guerrero or Peter Quillen or, you know, what happened to Chavez. I mean, Chavez was one of the guys that they, they were talking about and all that stuff. But now that he lost to Cesar Martinez, um, nobody talks about him. Now. Everybody. Everybody that has their up and everybody that has their down. Um, I'm going to face February the 9th, and I'm going to have my up, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have my up. Now, we know this fight isn't until February the 9th, but what stage are you in now? Are you are you in the camp, or are you currently resting and waiting to go for camp? Well, the thing is, it's like, um, I'm, like, I, like I said from the beginning, you know, uh, I have a good stable. In my in my circle, so I'm not that type of guy that you're ever gonna see in the club or or do whatever or drink or, or doing any other type of drugs, you know. So with a person like me that that's always just training, you know, that's all I do know. You know, if all I need is a week off and then I'm back in training. Um, my club is 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 my gym. You know, that's where I hang out and and have all my friends there. And all that stuff. So as soon as I was done with my last fight with J.C. Candelo, um, um, I took I took I think I took three or four days, and then I was back in the gym. Mhm. Now, what do you make of Peter Quillen as a fighter? Because we've seen good things from him up to now, but at the same time, he's shown in his recent fights that he's not quite a complete fighter. He does demonstrate some flaws. Yeah, I think I think I think. Um, this, this is where it's going to be, you know. Um, I don't think Golovkin is a, is a complete fighter. 
Tony Di Rosado is a complete fighter. I don't think Peter Quill is, is a complete fighter. And I don't think of myself as a complete fighter neither. I think once when we fight, January the 19th and February the 9th, I think we're going to become complete fighters. Who have the, made the best man win. I think Peter Quillen is fast, he's strong, he's, um, he's young, you know. Uh, and, and the only thing with me is, like, you know, when, when I got to go for a bet, I got to bet on myself. So I'm faster, I'm stronger, and I'm younger, you know. And I'm hungry, you know. So the thing is, is that, you know, we're all, we all need those people. Um, Brady Brewer, I needed him. I needed him to, 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 to take my first defeat, to make me into the man that I am now. If I never fought a Brady Brewer before, I don't think I would have been with me for a world title. You know? I think nobody now, because of the experience of, um, of everything, not, 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 I'm not talking about experience in boxing. I'm talking about experience in life. You know, I'm, I, um, I started, once when I, I suffered that first defeat, I started, um, um, how can I say, I started, you know, living. I started living, I started knowing how to, how to balance things out, how to work hard and enjoy life and just be stress-free and not have so much pressure. Because, you know, in the, in the East Coast, I had thousands of fans, you know, so... Uh, once when that could be a lot of pressure a lot of times, you know, because you're the only one from the East Coast that thousands of people are there to see you and you can never lose. But now, once, once when they see me not as a God, but as a human being, then they could see, they, they could be a little bit more merciful. And, and now, instead of saying, Fernando, beat the crap out of them, they say, Fernando, good luck, take care of yourself. Because I'll, I'll all in the day's job is, is, is a sport. You know, just like playing basketball, soccer, it's a sport. And, and when I get in there with P Peter, uh, I, I wish him the best luck. And, you know, hopefully once when we're both done, there's going to be a winner and it's going to be me. And we're both going to just move. Uh, we could we could get out the ring walking instead of being, you know, just hurt uh, and, and, and all that other stuff, you know. So, are you saying that this loss previous in your career is more of a positive thing now in the in the in the big picture? It, it's it's all positive. It's all positive because if it wasn't positive, I wouldn't be where I where, where I am now. You know, um, and you know if 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 it went the other way, there was going to be a lot of stuff wrong. Um, the money would have been there. But the mental and the experience wouldn't be there. And then you know how a lot of fighters they have money, but then they they have money, and then it'll just go in 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 one week, you know, because of the mental and everything else and all the peoples around them. So with me, I think it's all positive because I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be thinking about things that I'm that I'm thinking about now. And you just gotta take it. You. you in, in boxing, it's just like in boxing, you know, you you can't just expect to just give, give, give punches. You, you got to take some punches, too. You got to take punches. I, I knocked out 19 people, and then out of those 19 people, I beat um, all 20, 20, 25 of them. So who said that I can't take the loss? I'm experiencing the same thing that I did to 20, 20, 25 people. So now it's all a positive because I could give, I could receive, and I could do anything. What we do see from Peter Quillen is a good punch when he's able to plant his feet. Like in his last fight, he managed to floor Hassan and Dam six times but failed to get him out of there. Are you planning to take this into account and move a lot, use your feet, so he can't settle and get his shots off? Well, um, this, is, this is the thing. In boxing, there's a lot of middleweight. So I'm not the type of guy that watch boxing, and you know I don't like it. I don't like watching it. So the thing is, is like um, I only watch it when I'm gonna fight the person. So starting starting Monday, I'm gonna watch Peter Quinn's fight. So I'm not that very familiar with Pete, Peter. I've seen a little bit of clips, heard about the fight, so I had to see his last one. I saw a little bit of clips of that, and I saw what I needed to see. You know. He's a guy that is strong and, 
and 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 um, Nasim he's a good fighter. He was a real good fighter. You know, he moved well. He didn't he didn't fight like one of those fighters in internationally. He fought like an American. You know, because a lot of the Americans have that type of style. You know, you don't see a lot of people fighting that way like like he does. Uh, well, I haven't. You know, maybe other people have, but I I'm not that experienced in boxing too. To, to to know that in, in the national countries. But I'm not seeing the job. He did, he did a great job um, by getting up and all that stuff, but Peter did what he needed to do. If it wasn't for those six knockdowns, I don't think that the, the, the result would have been the same. Mm-hmm. Now, looking ahead, should you take this title, we've got a pretty good middleweight division at the moment. We've got Martinez, Golovkin, Sturm, Chavez Jr., who would you be most interested in fighting next? Should you be able to choose? If I, if uh, once when I be able to choose, because once when you're champion, you could choose. I would like to fight Martinez. I would like to be the first one to beat him um, before he retires. You know, that would be the person because I feel like he's the best right now. I feel like he. Um, once when I beat this this uh, Peter Quillen. Then I could I could fight um, Sergio Martinez. Then I could say okay, like I'd be satisfied. I said I'm like okay, I'm good now, and, and everybody else could come along. Yeah, Martin. I love watching Martinez. He's such a brilliant fighter. Really good to watch. Um, He's real good. Um, Okay, now, I'm happy to wrap this up, Fernando. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say to the fans? Any form of social networking information that you'd like to pass on? Well, um, which which one are the people that listen the most? Because you said that you're from U- UK, right? I'm from the UK, but the website is based in New Jersey. So we based yeah. we the website's based in New Jersey. We have we have a base in the UK. We have a base in New Jersey, but it's an American website. Okay, okay. Well, you know, just to my UK fans, I um I get all the tweets. And I and um, they've been asking me a lot of times when I'm gonna go over there and fight. So hopefully, when, once when I get this title, we'll um, I'll y'all see me live in UK. Um, you can follow me at Fernando Domini uh, at Twitter and um, Fernando El Guerrero on Facebook, FG De La Cruz on Instagram, and to all my fans, you know um, this. I'm trying to I'm trying to bring something different to boxing. I'm trying to bring that 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 hunger story. You know, like a lot of times when I'm with a Cinderella man, they ask him, um, "What are you fighting for?" And he said, "Milk." And it it meant a lot to me because I already knew what he meant. You know, when you're starving and when other people are starving, other people do it for the wrong for well for their reasons. I do it for my reason, and my reason is just. If I help, if, if if I if I can help, I will help. So you know, just uh, whether you don't like me or if you like me, you know, just stay tuned and watch Fernando Guerrero, February the ninth, make history for the first time um, in a long time. You're gonna have a Dominican Republic um, champion in the middleweight, and then uh, in the Eastern Shore, East Coast, you're gonna have a middleweight champ. And I'm just trying to, you know, reach out to everybody. You know, um, I'm a, I'm a black Hispanic that 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 um, can adapt to anything. So don't don't be scared of talking to me or reaching reaching out to me. You know, because I'm I'm just just like everybody else. All right, that's that's enough. Thanks for um, thanks for listening, guys. Make sure you tune in to Fernando Guerrero versus Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen for the WBO Middleweight Championship of the World. Once again, I'm your host, John Campbell. Take care. I'll see you next time.